Hello. Don't be alarmed at my appearance. I am a dragon fruit, Selenserius undatus. If you don't already know, dragon fruits are fruits from a cactus, kind of like a prickly pear. You can find them at pretty much any supermarket in my area. They normally come in red and yellow colors. I have taken on the form of a dragon fruit to put you at ease. Without further ado, the review of Unravel 1, the initial game. Unravel is a puzzle platforming style game by Swedish game developer Coldwood Interactive and published by EA. It uses a lot of grappling and lassoing mechanics. You play as a little red guy made out of yarn and you need to make sure you have enough slack to move forward. Yarn spools are placed throughout the levels to give you this extra slack, but some are hard to reach. The goal of the game is to collect these little knitted decorations to put on a photo album. The first thing that jumps out about Unravel is its beautiful setting. Much of the game has a peaceful and natural aesthetic. Nature is brilliantly shown and highlighted in all its stunning beauty. The beauty of nature is a big theme here, but the tone of the game does change as you go on, embracing the danger of antagonistic animals and industrial waste and machinery. But the game makes a point to return to the natural beauty throughout. I could feel some similarities to the aesthetic of Pikmin, albeit less silly than Pikmin, but still silly at times. Sometimes the picturesque scenes almost felt like a holiday animated montage on a screen at a fancy East Coast cafe, but playable, which wasn't entirely a bad thing. Unravel also reminded me of the game Journey. The way it had these lulls that were followed by these quick action sequences and also the subtlety of the characters' reactions and the sound and the music. It gave off definite Journey vibes. Actually, the name of the main character, Yarny, is a play on the name Journey. Though what you're seeing on screen does feel cozy, it's not a cozy game. The puzzles are tough, and the 2D platforming mechanics are tricky. Some have described the controls as a little clunky. As for the puzzles, they were fun and often very challenging, but they veered into frustrating sometimes. I don't like to have to consult walkthroughs during games. I enjoy beating the original portal without a walkthrough, despite needing a ton of tries on many stages but I had to consult a walkthrough several times. Mostly it was environmental things I missed, often objects that needed to be found and moved, or I didn't know some doorway was traversable. But a couple of times it was mechanical things, towards the end of the game especially. Specifically a lantern that had two ways of grabbing it, tying it up or lassoing it, and a swinging jump that only worked when I didn't tie my string to it. Also, I should note, Pushing and pulling don't always accomplish similar actions, even when it seems like they should. I'm not the best at puzzle platformers, since I rarely play them, so someone with a more puzzle-solving brain might have breezed through some of these difficulties. The story of the game was very subtly hinted at throughout the entire adventure. You are reliving memories from the past of the inhabitant of the house, traveling into photographs. It almost felt like you were psychedelically tripping into them. The home is filled with quaint little photographs, and you find your way into them and see what's behind them. It's a super sentimental game. It's all about a sense of deep, intense joy or pain that we get when a memory surfaces in our mind. Memories can be these half-remembered feelings that come with intense emotions attached to them. A smell, sight, sound, taste, or touch can bring those feelings rushing in. The neurons fire, and the memory takes shape, sometimes only for a brief moment. This game is kind of sad, and a little lonely. It's about returning to spaces where people once were. 
but the nature and your silly little character make everything less lonely feeling. I have to say the emotion didn't hit me at first, since I'm not a huge living in the past kind of guy. But midway through the game, when the main character picked up a knitted piece to carry home and lingered on it for a moment, it really hit me with a tingle of emotion that traveled throughout my body. It's a vague but quite touching story once you get into it. I have to admit there was a little bit of a feeling of missed opportunity here. This was mostly based on my own preference for flowing movement in games. And maybe the subconscious comparison to Journey a little bit. The game kept stopping for these involved puzzles, but at times the most fun for me was grappling and swinging freely through the game. While there were some portions that took good advantage of this, it would have been nice to have one level of just grappling and swinging from one quick puzzle to another without any hitch in your get-along. I sort of imagined a different game using the same setup, but removing most of the stopping and thinking puzzles and just getting a Sonic-esque flow going. But that's not what this game is about. As for the platforming, I mentioned before that some people say it's clunky. It wasn't DK Tropical Freeze level. It had its frustrations. But there was a thrill about hitting a swing or a jump that you failed a couple of times and just barely made it the next time. There's probably six to eight hours of gameplay here for the average player, but I would recommend taking it slow and playing the game little by little over time. This is a game best appreciated in reasonable segments of play. You don't want to eat it all too fast. You get a stomach ache. I'm glad to say I found zero functional glitches in this game. I mean, it's been out for a while, so I'm sure they patched it. So things were very smooth. That said, I got super frustrated near the end with the Dark Souls level of difficulty in this hill you have to get over with a lantern. Man, it's in the last stage of the game, and I got frustrated with it, but I got through it. The music and sound were just right for this game, ambient and beautiful. Overall, I'd say this game is an 8 out of 10, with the one caveat that I would warn about some frustration. So keep a YouTube walkthrough not too far away if you can. Initially, I almost wanted to give this game a 7.5 out of 10, but I felt I had to bump it up because I felt really fond of playing this one since I love nature. And wow, the visuals here are just completely stunning. This game is just aesthetically beautiful. It just killed it. I'm also a sucker for any game with mushrooms. And you even interact with some of the mushrooms in this game, so like, they got me there. I also really, really loved the intense rush of some of the visceral encounters with animals. This is a great game. Now let's look at Unravel 2. The game starts with a shipwreck, and you find you are now playing as two characters. You will be controlling both characters unless you're playing with a pal, family member, or significant other. The two characters are red and blue yarn dolls that are connected through a segment of yarn. The thing here that seems quite clear to me is that this game is geared toward local cooperative play. Unlike the original, which has no local co-op available, at least in the version I played. And as I mentioned, you play as two characters even in the single player in this game. Apparently this choice was made, as the game director said in an interview, because a lot of people enjoyed playing the original with someone else. A significant other, for instance. 
but I didn't have anyone to play this game with in co-op, so I'm going to be talking about only the single player experience, which was totally functional, and while it took a bit to get used to, worked very well. You can have your characters weave themselves together and become one character, or one of them can act as a stationary anchor that you can use to do things like swing from. The game starts as a tutorial, which the first did as well, and it's good to pay attention, which I did not do, because there are a lot of mix and match platforming mechanics at play here. Speaking of platforming, it's much more difficult in the latter levels than in the first game. There are some serious platforming challenges served up here, especially with the wall jump now being available. The platforming might have gotten more difficult, but it also got more precise. This game felt a lot smoother and more precise than the first. Though don't ask me to put my finger on exactly how. Also, there's no fall damage from great heights onto regular surfaces like there was in the first Unravel. I did like the new wall jump a lot, but I had mixed feelings about the removal of dying from falling from great heights. Though in the end, I think it was a good decision to remove this. Also, there is a surprise platforming mechanic added at the very end, and I won't spoil it here. This game also introduces these abstract dark energy enemies that can disintegrate you while you're doing puzzles or platforming. They act in different ways, and I don't want to play them up too much, but they're pretty cool. Some of them travel on a pattern, and some of them track you. The puzzles are much harder than the first game. But when I couldn't figure something out, it was usually my fault, and not the fault of the design of the puzzle. And that was the challenge. That's the fun of it. So they were good puzzles. And luckily, there was this great new hint system added. You can get hints of varying degrees for the puzzles depending on what you need, if you want them. There's no hints for the tough platforming sections, though. You can also slow down the game, but I never use this feature. I don't want to give any of the fun puzzles away, so I won't name all the tricks available. I hope I didn't give up too much when I was talking about the previous game. But what I will say is it's good to remember that you can press a button to detach your yarn from a distance in this one. The story is probably equally vague compared to the first but somehow it was less engaging and thus less touching, though it's difficult to articulate exactly why. The story uh, was something about being a teenager and the tough times involved in that. Maybe it was just that the first game's environments felt so much more connected to the spectral memories it was showing. Compared to the first game, the environments in this game do often feel more made for the game rather than natural environments that would exist without the characters there. Maybe it wouldn't have been as noticeable if I didn't play the first game and then this one, but it's impossible not to make the comparison. Also, there are more man-made environments and less nature in this one. These two things, the less engaging story elements and the sometimes less enchanting scenery, along with other elements, such as the lack of a grounded aesthetic in the hub world, sucked out a lot of that magical charm, but some of that was made up by some really fun portions of the game. My favorite parts of this game sort of addressed an issue that I had with the first game, that there wasn't enough of these long flowing parts without much stoppage that were fun and relaxing to play. My favorite parts of this game or these long frenetic parts where you have to move forward without stopping and thinking too much. There was a part where you were chased by these game birds that look like small turkeys. It was so much fun. It didn't do exactly what I was talking about in terms of missed opportunity from the first game. It wasn't chill flowing portions. It was more frantic, stressful flowing portions, but I still love this part a lot. 
they made me want to come back and play more. Plus, often these portions were in natural settings, which is much of what I enjoyed about the feel of the first game. And those turkeys. Gotta love an aggressive Swedish wild grouse. I should note the final portion of the final level offers something closer to my thoughts of a flowing level. For an extra challenge, there's these optional glowing ball things that are scattered throughout the levels that you can get by completing difficult parts that you don't have to do. The same thing was actually present in the first game as these little yarn coin badge things. But I didn't mention them in the last review since I only got some of them. And again, here I only got some of them. For example, one of these bonus magic energy balls was in an alternative platforming route from A to B that was much harder and required very precise wall jumping. There are also challenge stages in this game that are bonus stages with tougher puzzles to conquer. There is a lot here, and it's a beefy package in terms of detail, but it's still a short game. In terms of actual game time for the main game, for an average player, it doesn't take a hell of a long time. I'm going to say that there's a good range of time here depending on your experience with this type of game and with platforming skill. So I'm going to say about 5 to 10 hours of gameplay, but you know, these things are always estimates. While the other game felt like it was best taken slow, I'd say it's okay to play this one for longer sessions, and there's some fun in that. Checkpoints are well placed, except for one that was before a cutscene. The sound and music were very ambient and unintrusive. They kept up whatever emotion was on display. Again, this game was super smooth without any noticeable glitches. This game isn't as magical, beautiful, and touching as the first, but it feels a lot more precise. The puzzles are a challenge, the platforming is fun. Definitely get that grappling yarn button ready during this whole game for quick platforming. Overall, the feel of the game wasn't as good as the first. The abstract industrial hub world, the disconnected environments, and the vague teenage story didn't give a cohesive vision here. Even natural environments felt less realistic here with some more random placement of props for puzzling and platforming compared to the first game. You know, I'm not sure it makes sense to give games numerical scores. Unravel 1 and 2 are both really fun games, and putting games on an arbitrary scale might not make that clear. Uh, uh, I should also say that I didn't finish the challenge levels before giving this I should also say I didn't finish the challenge levels in this game. In addition, I don't feel like I could give this game a proper and fair score since I didn't have anyone to play it with in cooperative mode, and it seems like a game that was really made to shine in co-op. I'm sure it's a lot of fun in local co-op. I just, well, I didn't have anyone to play it with. Yeah. Um. So... Hey, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I, uh, yes, let's uh, give this game a score, shall we? It's a 7.5 out of 10. That's right, a 7.5. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more content. Like and subscribe. <laughs>